So it's about nine months since we set up that 500 gallon coral reef tank. We've added a number of fish, we've added a number of corals, and they're doing relatively well, but we have run into two issues. One being a nutrient buildup, nitrates and phosphates, and so we ended up implementing bi-weekly 100 gallon water changes, as well as increasing the number of algae scrubbers on the system. The second issue is alkalinity and calcium. Not enough for the really hard corals, the stony corals or the, the staghorn corals. So today, we're gonna be adding a calcium reactor to the system, which will be hooked up to the apex and will monitor and control the amount that's dispensed, making the job much easier and simpler for us. So as always, come along and see what's going on. So as you can see, our coral reef is really coming along. There's a number of fish in the tank, uh, a large number of corals, and they're all doing quite well. As I mentioned, we've got uh, a nitrate, or should I say a nutrient challenge, as well as a water chemistry on the calcium side challenge. So today, uh, we're going to be adding a calcium reactor. This is a Geo's Reef Calcium Reactor. Uh, it'll be hooked into the apex itself, which currently monitors and controls the entire aquarium. Um, and as far as the nutrient issue, uh, again, I'm doing bi-weekly 100 gallon water changes in the system, having just done one of them yesterday. Uh, today, I need to uh, clean out the algae scrubber. Uh, I saved that so I could show you how much algae it produces. And then two, I need to refill uh, the phosphate or GFO reactor with the GFO media. But I thought you would enjoy seeing how well the tank has come along. There's a large school of uh, Antheus in there, a number of uh, Bangai cardinals as well as pajama cardinals, a small group of um, fire or flame gobies, a small little school of um, blue chromis in there. Uh, flame Angel, Lemon Peel Angel, there's also a Multibar Angel in the tank uh, who's a little more on the secretive side. He spends time down there at the bottom. Um, Royal Gramas, uh, of course a number of clownfish in the system as well. And then there's a handful of uh, tangs. I think there's a chocolate tang, uh, purple tang, and a uh, yellow tang. Um, as far as I'm concerned, this is all the fish we're going to be adding to the tank. Uh, Population-wise, I think it's active enough, and fish-wise, I think we've got quite a variety of color and shapes and sizes in there. As far as the corals are concerned, uh, a number of soft corals, toadstools, leather corals, etc., finger corals, uh, green star polyps, uh, we've got some uh, zoanthids in there, um, I've got a few pieces of hammer coral, um, as well as a couple of bird's nest corals. Now, the hammer corals to a certain degree are my um, uh, bell ringer or bellwether, whichever word you want to use, and I have lost one um, hammer coral that was down here. Uh, the rest of them are all uh, doing okay, but I don't see any new significant growth in there. Uh, same thing applies with the uh, little bird's nest corals. Those were in the SPS realm of things and they are also kind of a bellwether. Uh, they've not declined but uh, again they've not improved. Um, so I think the first thing we're going to do is a uh, there's the little uh, multicolor angel right there or multi-barred angel. Um, the first thing we're going to do is go and review the filter system outside with Scott see what he wants to do and what he's going to be implementing and how he's going to go about doing it 
And then secondly, I need to run some tests to get an idea as to uh, a baseline where we're at water chemistry wise. And then again, I'll address the uh, nutrient control mechanisms. So here's our filter system out here, a large sump uh, that everything coming from the tank has to pass through filter socks over here into the next few chambers, large red dragon type protein skimmer. We did end up adding a uh, reservoir, a cute little barrel, 10 gallon barrel for uh, uh, ATO or top off for fresh water. Uh, this is my uh, GFO reactor that we added afterwards. Uh, down inside here is the uh, algae scrubbers. Back up here would be the Apex energy bars. There's the controller for the chiller, uh, the main uh, controls for uh, the uh, Neptune are inside here with a little display. Refrigeration unit is down here and then I just added this uh, nifty little platform here that we'll put the calcium reactor on. Uh, one little side note, uh, these lids that close down on top of the unit uh, this summer became a challenge as far as uh, getting the heat out of the system so we've had to uh, leave one of the doors open because it's just passive ventilation as opposed to active so today we're going to be installing a uh, I believe it's a car radiator type DC operated uh, exhaust fan that'll just basically suck the air from within this cabinet drawing cooler air in here and hopefully no longer having such an influence on um, temperature uh, of the water. Um, Mr. Magic is over here getting uh, stuff set up. Uh, can you say hi to the folks? How you guys doing? Uh, I think you're working on putting the uh, CO2 regulator on a CO2 bottle. Yeah. So I've got two bottles here, the idea being that um, we're going to use one and uh, one will empty and at some point I'll have a backup on hand which then will allow me to take the empty one at a little bit of a casual pace back down and exchange it at the fish wholesalers. Um, this is a uh, electronic uh, regulator Yes. and the advantage of an electronic regulator as opposed to the more typical ones that we used uh, 20 years ago is? Uh, we don't have to count bubbles with that one so you turn the dial to set the uh, rate of which the CO2 bubbles leave the reactor um, based on seconds so you can set it anywhere from one bubble every fraction of a second to one bubble every I think 20 seconds or whatever it is on there. More reliable uh, measuring out of it's the CO2? It's just a little bit easier and plus because it uses a solenoid for the uh, CO2 release you don't really have to worry about um, off-gassing like you would with a traditional single-stage regulator which means that when the CO2 tanks get really low on pressure they tend to release a lot of CO2 at one time which is a historic problem with single-stage regulators and the clipper um, solenoid bypasses that issue or essentially eliminates it but ultimately it's just a simpler control a little bit more precise control than counting bubbles um, and they work remarkably well I've been using the same regulator for years now and this brand is um Carbon Doser by Aquarium Plants. Aquariumplants.com, okay. And uh, we're installing a reactor on the system, a calcium reactor. This is the Geo's Reef Reactor. Which yep. model was so this? Geo 618, and then there's a, uh, I think a 416 uh, secondary reactor that we'll use to buffer. We'll fill that up with some uh, ARM media. And this particular reactor, this will have the um, Reborn media topped off with some remag. So reborn is basically a coral skeleton, um, and everything that the coral consumed in its growth stage will then be dissolved and used inside the tank or dispersed into the tank, so that any of those trace elements that are part of the coral skeleton will be um, put into the system. So we're going to be breaking down the coral skeleton, which Correct. previously consumed all the trace elements and various minor and major elements that it needed to grow with. That's correct. As opposed to trying to dose all of those things independently ourselves. Correct. Yeah, most people traditionally they'll dose calcium and alkalinity, but um, more often than not there's trace element deficiencies. Um, whereas this solution will not only provide the calcium and alkalinity and magnesium, but it will also provide additional trace elements that are important for coral growth. And so this is with the CO2, we'll drop the pH inside there and dissolve that um, 
coral gravel or coral Skeleton. media skeletons. That's correct. And then the second reactor was for what now? That essentially buffers. So the output from the calcium reactor goes into the secondary reactor, and that'll help bring the pH of the effluent back up a little bit so it doesn't have as much of an impact on the tank's pH. Aha. Uh -huh. Interesting. Okay, so... Um, to feed this little guy, we're using this Kamoer um, peristaltic pump. This Kamoer? Is that how it's pronounced? Kamoer, Kamoer, I don't know. But okay. essentially it's an inexpensive peristaltic pump that'll run 24-7. We can control the flow by turning the dial. And traditionally a lot of people run their calcium reactors with a feed pump and then they use these little needle valves to control the flow. And the disadvantage is that over time the valves clog up, the lines clog up because you're running a very slow flow rate through there and the water is extremely turbid or you know has a high calcium content. So it tends to clog up the lines and then what ends up happening is your pH drops and it becomes a struggle to maintain the calcium reactor's consistency. Whereas if you use a continuous feed pump, especially a variable speed one, we can control the flow of the water rate going through the reactor down to a trickle um, coupled with a very precise uh, CO2 rate, you know, we get a nice balance in there and we should be able to balance this out such that the controller, in our case, the apex, it'll ultimately control the CO2, won't really have to intervene. Essentially, the pH rate inside the reactor will be extremely consistent. And, you know, for my reactor, I use a, a Master Flex pump, which is a uh, little bit more commercial or a lot more commercial grade of one of these pumps. Uh, made by a medical company. It's a continuous duty type of pump and I've been using it for years and my calcium reactor effluent is never, uh, is always, let me rephrase it, my calcium reactor effluent is always consistent. The pH levels inside my reactor are always consistent and between the combination of the pump as well as the carbon doser, I never have variations um, in the pH inside the reactor which means that my controller, that the CO2 regulator is plugged in, and never has to intervene. It never has to shut the CO2 off. Interesting, okay. All right, so I need to uh, address the GFO reactor and the algae scrubbers, and then I also want to run a series of tests to give us a baseline. Yes. Um, which do you want me to do first? Uh, that's up to you. I've got some work to do. I need to do some drilling to get some bulkheads put in for the uh, input and output from the reactor, um, so those will need to get into the sump. Um, and, uh, and we need to rinse the uh, media and get everything set up, so it's your call. Okay. All right, well, let's get to work. Geo's Reef, the fabricator of the world-famous Geo Calcium Reactor line, has released a new dual-chamber reactor. The CR612X2 is designed for hobbyists concerned with low effluent pH. Geo reactors utilize the bottom-up water flow method to capture free CO2 and draw it back into the circulation pump. This design consumes less gas in the reaction chamber and less gas in the effluent. Not sure which reactor is best for you? Geo provides several different models. Geo reactors are fabricated in the USA. Check out geosreef.com today. So, your cool nano reef tank is doing great, but you've got an algae problem? Consider the drop from Santa Monica filtration. Seven sizes to easily fit into the filter compartment of most nano tanks. And just like their bigger cousins, the Hawk and the Surf, all use air bubbles and LED light technology to grow algae. Algae that consumes nutrients and that algae replaces itself at no new cost to you. For more information on Santa Monica Filtration's drop, hog, and surf algae scrubbers, visit santa-monica.cc. Hey there, Terrence here again from Neptune Systems. Today I want to tell you all about a brand new product we have called the PMUP. Now I know that's a mouthful, but PMUP stands for Practical Multipurpose Utility Pump. Truth be told, we named it that way because we wanted to have a little fun. PMUP is actually pump spelled backwards. The PMUP is a 24 volt DC submersible pump that was designed to directly connect to the DC24 accessory ports on either the one link module or the same ports on the new Energy Bar 832. If you own our wave power heads or our new Apex, 
then you already have a place to plug it in. These ports are switchable and they can power the pump on and off just like any other outlet on the energy bar. The PMUP is a multi-purpose pump that can be used for many different tasks on your aquarium. Auto Top Off, also known as ATO, will likely be the most popular use for this pump. And since this pump has enough pressure to push water up 14 feet vertically, it can even move the water up from one floor below. This means you could put your RO water container in storage in the basement or in a downstairs utility room and it can still pump it upstairs to the tank. It also has a vertically oriented design with a bottom intake and a top output that is just perfect to use in jugs or RO other, other RO containers. Just drop it in. But the PMUP is not just for ATO. It's also a great pump to use for running various reactors like for bio pellets or carbon or GFO or even those two stage reactors you know of. The PMUP uses less than 20 watts of power so it's very efficient and a great way to run reactors while adding very little heat to your aquarium. We're certain that there will be many other uses found out there for the PMUP that we haven't even thought of yet. The output on the PMUP is a standard 3 8 inch diameter so it works great with tubing like the silicone type or better yet with push fit type fittings. There's even one that takes the 3 8 down to a standard quarter inch RO tubing. Since the pump is on off only, if you want to control the flow, just add a little valve like this one. The PMUP is available right now through all authorized Neptune Systems reseller partners and in the USA it retails for just $39.95. Now thanks for tuning in to another Neptune Systems video and if you like what you see, be sure to subscribe to our channel and then you'll know every time a new video releases. Take care and happy reef keeping. Hey guys, I'm back. Why? Because since I filmed the segments you just saw, we've decided to make a change to the PMUP. And that is we're going to offer it also with a power transformer in a second version. This means even if you don't have a one link, um, you might not even have an Apex, you can still use the PMUP. Maybe you want to use it with your own ATO solution. Um, but if you do have an Apex, for instance, you can use an energy bar, plug the power transformer in, and turn your PMUP on and off with that. So no matter what you have, we've got a solution for you with the PMUP. Go out and get one. It's an awesome device for your aquarium. And again, till next time, for real this time, happy reef keeping. As Scott drills holes for installing the calcium reactor, I'm going to service the nutrient export aspects of the tank. Now that I'm getting the hang of the Apex system and all of its possibilities, I find myself using my iPhone and the Apex app to control many of the aspects of the aquarium system. Here I can turn off the water pump that drives the GFO reactor. This media, loosely called GFO, more specifically called granular ferric oxide, is a media that helps absorb phosphates from the system. And in this particular case, it's notably dropped the phosphate levels down to 0.06. And I change this media every other week. The GFO media is held inside an inner container of the canister. It doesn't require much of the media and we want room for it to loosely tumble. After giving the media a good rinsing, we can reassemble the container and place it back inside the canister. Or I will reattach it back into position, tightening the reactor so that there's no leaks. And then once again, using the Apex app, I will turn on the water pump that drives that GFO reactor. To control the nitrate aspects of the nutrient buildup, 
I have algae scrubbers down inside the filter sump. So this tank has two algae scrubbers on there. The original uh, hog stands for hang on glass, which is clamped to the outside of the sump here. And that was the original intent uh, for two of them, but didn't have enough space. So we ended up substituting the second one with a uh, surf, which floats at the surface. You can see the amount of algae that is growing inside of it, so I'm going to go ahead and clean that out now. Algae scrubbers have come a long ways since their original design by Dr. Walter Aidy of the Smithsonian Institute years ago. Instead of large screened areas and multiple ecosystem tanks, they've now been scaled down into these boxes or trays, but they're still using the same basic principle which is growing algaes that consume nutrients as they grow. And it's the algae that's got the nutrients, the nitrates locked up inside of it. So I'm now physically removing that out of the system. So you can see how the uh, surf uh, works here. It's a floating tray that has the uh, strings inside of there that the algae can grow off of. And the airline itself comes in from the underside and through those little ports there and percolates up through the unit. And then you've got the uh, LEDs, the red colored uh, growing lights that goes on the top of it. And then there's the more traditional hog, which will clean that out as well. And you can see just how full that is with algae inside of it. It too has the various strings on there that the algae grabs a hold of. As well as the green grabber surface on the back side which is a very porous or textury surface. These scrubbers are offered by Santa Monica Filtration, who offers four different versions beyond its original design to fit a number of various applications. And again, it's that algae is what the nitrates are locked up inside of. One of the things I've found with the uh, air-driven algae scrubbers is the quality of the air pump defines really how much air it's going to uh, generate and how often you need to clean the little uh, uh, airline, the slotted airline where the air is dispersed. A lot of times these inexpensive air pumps only seem to last for about six months. Uh, this is what became, or the, the, the Tetra Luft pump, Luft, L-U-F-T pump became, which is a much more a uh, capable air pump and on the bigger tanks these are now the size air pump I'm using um, it generates so much that it doesn't allow or allow the, the, the salt to crust up at the air diffusion point so both that surf as well as that hog which do take occasional little attention as far as freeing up the airline just to make sure that that salt doesn't completely build up in there but because of the strong airflow through there it doesn't get a chance to build up as much as what it used to with the weaker air pumps. So between the algae scrubbers and the bi-weekly 100 gallon water change, I've been able to control the nutrients, nitrates, and phosphates to a very manageable level.